Jupiter, Saturn, and now Mars, all in a sky near you. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Hi, I'm Pat Prokop, and my astronomy page on the web is heavenlybackyardastro.com. Please take a look at the website. A lot of the videos and the pictures that I take that I post on Facebook, I also post on my website. And on my YouTube page, please uh, subscribe to my page. And thank you, thank you, thank you to all my subscribers that have joined my page. Uh, so far, I have just passed the 1,000 mark. That's a milestone. Hopefully, I'll be up to 2,000 pretty soon. It all depends on you. But I don't make these uh, videos for me. I make them for you. I have learned a lot of information about astrophotography from watching other people's YouTube pages. So please uh, keep in mind that I'm doing this. So what I have learned will help you out as well. Well, with that being said, let's talk about the planets. Now, when photographing the planets, the telescope is rather important. You can do it uh, with any scope you want, but the longer the focal length, the better off you're going to be. Now, with a, uh, a smaller uh, telescope with a uh, wide field of view, like an F5 or an F6, even an F7, you, you'll see the planets, but they're gonna be very small uh, in, the view, in the view itself. Uh, very difficult to, uh, to see any of the uh, features on the planet. Now, if you have an F10, like this Celestron here, it's an F10 telescope, you'll see much more. The, the drawback is it's a tighter field of view and much more difficult to star align uh, with the, uh, uh, a longer focal length. Now, with the Barlow lens uh, attached to this telescope, it amplifies it twice. I have a 2x power Barlow lens, and that goes from F10 to F20, or basically a focal length of 2,800 millimeters to 5,600 millimeters. That is a long focal length, but in the process, you get a much larger view of the planets inside the view itself. Uh, it, however, as you amplify it, you're going to lose some of the light itself and the image is going to be a little bit darker. Of course, you can make up for that in uh, post-processing or even in, in the actual photography uh, by uh, uh, increasing the gain and, or slowing down the shutter speed uh, to make up for the difference in brightness. I rambled on a lot on that one, so let me try that again. So that's going to be a really tight in view. Again, it's very difficult to star a line when you have these tight views. Instead of having a view something like this, and you imagine it this, your view with an F10 is about this size, and with an F20, you're down to a little bitty area of the sky. So you better be uh, uh, accurately star aligned before you even try to start searching for the planets with a uh, Barlow attached to your telescope. Again, an F10 is ideal for planetary observation, and to get more features, a Barlow really helps. So with the planets, we have Jupiter and Saturn high in the southern sky at sunset, but becoming more dominant and prominent over in the southeastern sky at sunset, almost in the east-southeastern sky, is the planet Mars. Mars continuously is getting brighter and brighter, approaching a magnitude of minus two. Right now, it's, uh, let's see what it is, uh, minus 1.8 tonight. Um, this is September 3rd. Uh, it, it's gaining uh, brightness as we approach the opposition. What am I talking about opposition and planetary conjunctions even? Uh, J Jupiter and Saturn are going to be in conjunction with each other coming up uh, at the, uh, uh, near the end of December, December 21st. Well, let's go upstairs and talk about that. You know, for the past several months, Jupiter and Saturn have been dominant in the southern sky around the midnight hours. Now it's up there at around 8 o'clock in the evening right after sunset, high in the southern sky. When you look at the planets themselves, let's take a look at how they orbit about the sun. Of course, you have the inner planets not shown on this picture here. We've got the sun, Mercury, and Venus. Then you have the Earth. Now, all the planets orbit around the sun in a counterclockwise direction if you're looking down uh, from above. Then you have Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. And, 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 and this is the position where they are right now. The Earth has just passed Jupiter and Saturn. They had oppositions during the summer months. 
And the Earth, though, is moving faster in its orbit than the planet Mars. Mars itself is moving a little bit slower, but eventually the Earth will catch up to the position of Mars in its orbit. And the two will be known as having a um, opposition. This will be October 13th. That's when the best view of Mars will occur, occur. And also, that's when Mars will be rising right at sunset and it will be up all through the night. Mars is a brilliant ruddy red right now and it's getting even brighter up in the sky. Now, when you look at the uh, uh, other planets, uh, the outer planets, Jupiter and Saturn, they're not done yet. They're going to be putting on a show later on. On December 21st, they're going to be aligned uh, with a view of Earth called a conjunction. And that's when the uh, the view of the planets are aligned with the view from the Earth. And if you're looking from the Earth, you'll see the planets uh, behind each other. So in this particular case, on December 21st, Jupiter and Saturn will be aligned with each other from our viewpoint from Earth, and they'll look like they're appearing right on top of each other in the sky. That's going to be a rather spectacular event. It's going to be low in the southwestern sky, though, uh, in the uh, early evening hours. So you're going to have to have a good view of the southwestern horizon when this event occurs. Meanwhile, when you look at the orbits of the Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, if you shrink it down to this scale here, then we can start talking about the outer outer planets, those being particularly of uh, Neptune and Uranus. To view Uranus, You've got a long distance to go, and Neptune even further out than that. And if we look at the um, actual distance themselves, here we have the Earth from the Sun, 93 million miles. Uh, Mars is about 142 million miles on the average. Now, on October 13th, I think it's only going to be 45 million miles away. Uh, then you have um, Jupiter, which is 484, nearly a half a billion miles away. And then you have Saturn its orbit right here, which is almost a billion miles out. On the average, though, it's 889 million miles from the sun. And then you have Uranus, 1,790 million miles away, or in other words, 1.8, basically, billion miles away. Now, to view Neptune, <laughs> that's 2.8 billion miles, or 2,800 million miles away. So, looking at these planets, um, for example, trying to view uh, Neptune uh, is almost impossible in itself because uh, here, when I viewed Neptune, it just looked like a green dot up in the sky. This was highly magnified a uh, view at that. Now Uranus, I did get a picture of Uranus one time. I'm working on that. Some see, some people pronounce it Uranus. I pronounce it Uranus. Um, and it's a, a bluish green uh, object. Uh, when I took this picture last year in December, it was 1,758,000,000 miles from Earth. Um, and, and Jupiter, and not Jupiter, uh, and Neptune was almost twice that distance away. So you need a very strong telescope to see any of these distant planets. An eight inch at least, this was with the 11 inch telescope, a 14 inch wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Um, of course, the Hubble Space Telescope, well, that'd be better yet. But uh, we have Jupiter, and we have uh, Saturn. Everybody loves Saturn. The ring planet, the mystical planet, and the bringer of old age, I think it's also known as. And, uh, and then the, the warrior, Mars. Mars is going to be the planet to watch for the next several weeks as it gets brighter and brighter up in the sky. And you might want to watch around these, um, these, these uh, I, I think these are plumes of dust, dust storms uh, flowing across the planet itself. That's the ice cap uh, right there, one of the poles. And um, Mars is going to be a very interesting planet to view. I hope you get out and enjoy the heavenly skies. The planets will be shining brightly for the next several weeks, if not the next several months, all in a sky near you. Now, one other thing I want to leave you with, something that you don't want to do at night, particularly in the southeast portion of the country, when you're walking out to your telescope. Thanks for watching. And uh, I want to show you something else that could cause problems walking outside at night in the dark.
That is a fire ant nest. And you don't want to walk into this thing at night. Let me show you what happens. Observe, they come out. These aren't your regular ant. They'll come out and crawl up your legs and they bite and they leave little second degree burns, little welts all over the place where they bite and they hurt when they bite as well. And then the bite itches for two or three days if, if it doesn't get infected first. Usually that's what happens, gets infected, then it starts to itch. But you don't certainly want to step in this during the nighttime hour to be full of all kinds of surprises that you do not want to encounter. <laughs> <laughs>